We're gonna be looking at Oscarizer today. It is by Audio Sugar. It is a, the free version of their oscilloscope. There's a pro one, and this isn't just an oscilloscope, it's also a spectrogram, and it's also a vector scope. But they call it, I'm not sure what this stands for, but it's it's a vector scope. So we're I'm only interested in this main scope portion of it. It is a very intriguing scope. There are things I've never seen in other scopes done before. Like for example, uh, absolute value down here. If you click this, it shows you the absolute value. That's, that's cool. I don't know when I would use this because I've never had it as an option, uh, but it's interesting. They've got the modes here too to change the scaling, which is not something you see very often on scopes where they have deliberate scaling. And then they've got two vertical zoom controls. Now, these this being separated to me is is uh, a touch confusing. But let me just show you. This is kind of how you expect it to zoom. But you can also zoom it from the line. So it's it is an interesting concept. Like I guess if you want to see just the peaks, you could set it at a threshold and only detect transients. I actually think this might be uh, useful <laughs> in terms of like looking at something and like having it, I don't know, set off a flag, but uh, interesting, interesting, it's strange things here in here. There's a few controls. The, the way they did their main section is there's this like um, everything in this scrollable container, which by the way, scrolls for a long time. I do not know what is up with this enormous container but you could scroll it for a really long time. And if you click this button, it stands for all in one. Um, you can go to things in a tabbed sort of way. I assume that the pro version probably has a more controls or something. And so maybe switching between the tabs or not, but I, I like working in this view. You can bypass it, you can reset it, you can freeze it, all the sort of standard things. So if we freeze it, there you go. Horizontal positioning, uh, whatever your window size is. So you see, we could set our, our size. And it is kind of cool that changing the size does not alter the data and erase it. You can, you can keep it on the screen. That is always really nice. And you can alter how the data is displayed. Like, it's just nice that it stays on the screen. You, a lot of places, they'll erase this and give you a blank slate and you have to go in and get it again. But uh, the horizontal positioning, so you've got your zoom here and then you scroll around like this. These are presets here, but it just tells me that there's no presets found <laughs> whenever I click them. So I didn't really use those. Um, but that is this this area. I think it's channel area. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Uh, FFT does not matter because uh, we're not in the mode. I would imagine if we're not in scope, if we're not in spectrum mode, it would be cool if this like wasn't here. Uh, that would be nice. If we go over to the spectrum and change it here, you can see how that sort of affects things. Tools. There are these weird tools. You can generate a test tone uh, with this and that you could turn the meter on and off and set things about the meter. Again, not really scope related. Would be cool if they were somewhere else if I'm using it mostly as a scope. Uh, you can use it to change the gain, but you have to have it clicked for it to actually change the gain. But the knob gives no indication if it's on or off. You have to know that the button is how you do it. The knob should do it. And there shouldn't be a button turning it on or off if it's and it should just be set to zero by default. And then if you touch it, you touch it and it does what you expect it to. It's weird to me that there's a button here to do that. The GFX control graphical things. So filled fills in the line. Alias makes the line a little bit smoother. And then we've got our grids. Grid one is this sort of horizontal grid with DB marks on the side, which is nice. And grid two is the, they have these time markers, which is why I switched to a zoomed out view for this. And then you've got color controls. You can control uh, various colors of different things, maybe make the playhead a different color. So, and there's a thing that reads out the display. It is resizable. Change the size around however you want, which is kind of kind of nice. And it's very smooth. I've had no issues with it, like glitching or doing anything sort of weird. I'm a little bit surprised there's not a trigger section. Um, if I play like a sine wave, 
how it chooses to draw this wave, it doesn't look very stable. And also the wave, because of their vertical zooming, looks kind of odd. You see that? And if you give it more complicated waves, it just doesn't sit still. If you zoom out, it'll it'll sit still. Or if you freeze it, it'll sit still. But even when you pause it, this, these sorts of things are just odd to me as far as the oscilloscope aspect of this plugin. Maybe the Pro one is different. Maybe there are additional options. It does have a use case though. This vert zooming opens up interesting looks at just transients. I thought this would take you to the website. It just highlights. It doesn't actually take you anywhere. Uh, so that's interesting. This is their website. And it, they're showing obviously the pro one, which has, it looks sick as heck. Like look at all this stuff. It looks so cool. Multi-channel support. Look at this. This is crazy looking. Um, and their UI decisions make a lot more sense in that context. Um, Multi-channel support, uh, transient analyzation, like all this stuff is so freaking cool. The free one is right here. So they've got a Mac version, a Windows version, and you can see the formats right here. So yeah, it's it's dang cool. I actually think the Pro one's probably worth the money. I might I might go for it. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon and have a blessed day.